hi, uh, I'm Brian Cutler. I'm a software engineer at IBM, and I work uh, for the Center for Open Source Data and AI Technologies. Uh, it's a mouthful. Uh, we call it Coday for short. Um, it was previously called the Spark Technology Center, but since then we've expanded to include more AI-driven endeavors. Um, we're just kind of down the street on Howard. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I mainly focus on open source development there. I'm a committer for Apache Arrow and for Apache Spark. And I have a focus on Python and machine learning and working on optimizations and improving the overall experience for users. Uh, feel free to hit me up at GitHub. Uh, there's my uh, username. Uh, so today I just want to go over a little bit about how uh, some work I was involved in in integrating Apache Arrow with Spark. Um, there are other people involved too. Uh, so I'll go over some of those details and talk a little bit about kind of problems we were trying to solve in Spark and how Arrow really was a, a big help in what it could provide to solve these problems. And I'll go over some specifics about where in Spark it's being used now and finally talk about some current and future developments. So in Spark, we started hearing a lot of people complain about uh, their Python code running so slow. Um, and uh, this is dealing largely with the Spark data frame API, which is pretty much a wrapper around uh, Java implementation of everything. So uh, when this came out uh, in Spark 2.0, uh, the data processing was very fast as long as the user would keep the data in the JVM. Um, but as soon as they needed to go outside to a Python process, uh, it would just be a huge bottleneck and things would slow down to a crawl. So um, you know, a lot of people didn't understand why uh, performance was so different than uh, running the same kind of uh, UDFs in Scala. Um, but there's a couple reasons for this big bottleneck. Uh, one, when trying to transfer data to Python, uh, Spark would use the pickle format, which uh, is not known to be terribly uh, efficient and uh, is kind of a, a bulky serialization format. Uh, and furthermore, it, it uh, forced Spark to iterate over each scalar value to serialize uh, each individual value. Um, and this kind of led to uh, a lot of loops when Spark needs to serialize and deserialize and then process all this data. And uh, anybody that uses uh, NumPy and Pandas know that uh, you want to avoid that because it's bad. So uh, <clears throat> looking at Arrow, uh, it provided a lot of good solutions to handle these problems. Um, it provided this common format between Java and Python uh, which would allow us to uh, convert our data into an arrow format in the JVM and uh, avoid this serialization issue and then uh, be able to just uh, send it over to the Python process where it could directly consume it and process it uh, right off the bat. Uh, Arrow also provided uh, IPC mechanisms to uh, allow for reading and writing over sockets, which uh, how Spark transfers data already. So that was uh, uh, great. And um, it pretty much supported uh, all the major types that Spark would need to uh, be able to work with in Python. So um, a lot of uh, this initial work was dealing with uh, transferring data from the Java process into a Python process. Okay, I'll go over um, just a few areas where uh, this was integrated in. Um, uh, the, the first place we uh, used Arrow was in doing a two pandas conversion. So if you're given a Spark data frame, uh, you wanna collect that to your driver side application, um, uh, which, which basically brings all the data uh, over to Python. Um, and this started off as being very inefficient because uh, it, it uh, initially does a complete collect of all the data 
uh, in this pickle format, uh, which produces uh, individual records. It builds all these records up into a huge list in Python, and uh, then through a very inefficient way, creates this pandas data frame from these records. So uh, one thing Arrow helped out with this is because we could convert the data on the Spark executor side, uh, which would allow us to uh, do this in parallel. And then when it came to collect all that data, we just brought in a whole bunch of Arrow batches into the driver application, and we could combine them together, and Arrow supported already converting this into a pandas uh, data frame. So this uh, was introduced in Spark 2.3. Um, it's not enabled by default, so this is one optimization that if you want to use, you have to be sure to include this configuration that I have here. So w once that was uh, introduced, uh, it gave a pretty good speed up uh, for uh, collecting to a pandas data frame. And uh, another area that's kind of related uh, goes in the opposite direction. Given a pandas data frame, you want to create a Spark data frame from this. And this is also very well suited for uh, Arrow format. Previously, this was a major slowdown and wasn't useful in Spark at all because in order to uh, even just a small amount of data would uh, run very slowly, so it's almost useless to try to send this to Spark. But with the addition of Arrow, you can create a huge data frame and be able to very efficiently send it to Spark and uh, carry on with your Spark processing and everything. So the, uh, part of the reason this was so slow before is because uh, the, trying to ingest pandas data, Spark has no idea what kind of data types there are. It uh, did not try to look at pandas types or NumPy types. So it treated everything as a Python object. And even if you try to specify a schema, it still needed to loop through all the data, do verification checks, run through, uh, uh, some cleansing to produce clean uh, data for Java, then clean data for uh, uh, Spark uh, to, con to make sure everything was in a format that Spark could easily accept. Um, so with the addition of Arrow, uh, basically none of that was needed. And starting off with a pandas data frame, we can very quickly just produce uh, Arrow record batches send those to the JVM, and the JVM can then uh, send them out in a parallel manner to the cluster. So um, it had a huge speed up and um, was a great use of Arrow. Uh, working with the UDFs was also a, a major concern for users. There's a, a couple types of UDFs available in Spark right now. The most common is probably a, a scalar type, which is very similar to a standard UDF. And all, the, all these vectorized UDFs, or also known as pandas UDFs, uh, interoperate with, with pandas data, so of various types. So depending on what kind of uh, UDF you create, you might have a, a slightly different types of inputs. So for a scalar pandas UDF, it can take columns that will uh, produce input that are pandas series, and you're going to want to output a pandas series from that. So uh, part of the reason this area was uh, a huge slowdown before Arrow is because uh, not only a serializ serialization issue is going one way, but data gets sent from the JVM over to Python, does the processing, um, uh, record by record, by the way, and then builds a whole list of Python records and needs to serialize, do serialize that back to the JVM. So Arrow really helped out a lot in this area and um, not only uh, gives a performance boost, but using 
pandas uh, to express your user-defined functions is also a huge plus and allows you to uh, run these functions uh, in a vectorized manner and util utilize all the nice hardware features that go along with that. Uh, a second type of UDF is called a grouped map type. Um, this was introduced by uh, Lee Jin at Two Sigma, and it's a super useful addition. Um, here's a, a little example of, of how it's used. Um, <clears throat> this is slightly different in that you'd uh, write your UDF and express it with a pandas data frame as input. and uh, your output would also be a pandas data frame. So what's useful about this is you can take your Spark SQL data and do an efficient group by on some kind of column, and uh, all that will be done uh, very quickly by the Spark internals on the JVM, and then it will transfer these groups in batches uh, over to Python using Arrow. So uh, each batch that you process will be a complete group ID, uh, and you'll be able to process your data as one complete pandas frame. And, and, and this is really, uh, really nice for pandas users that are familiar already with these kind of uh, group by apply um, schematics. Uh, one caveat, though, is that uh, you do need to be weary of maybe how your groups are skewed because it will collect all groups into one batch and that will need to fit it in memory. Uh, okay, so that's basically the areas that Spark is being used uh, with Arrow right now. Currently, I am uh, have some ongoing work of trying to use uh, the Arrow stream format to work with uh, the two pandas collection and creating a data frame from pandas. The UDFs already use the stream format, but um, when two pandas and creating the data frame were first introduced, uh, for whatever reasons, the Arrow file format was uh, what we needed to use. So. Um, uh, working with the stream format, I'm hoping that it will be a little less memory intensive and be a little bit faster performance-wise. Uh, also, Lee Jen of Two Sigma is working on adding uh, windowed UDFs that use uh, the same kind of mechanism but allow you to specify different windows in Spark SQL and, uh, again, process data using pandas on uh, various windows. Um, I'd also like to see uh, Spark add the ability to uh, externalize this Arrow data. Um, I mean, right now it's just being used to hand off data from Java to Python, vice versa. But um, uh, I, I think you know it would be a, a great uh, a great way to interact Spark with other uh, systems to be able to externalize Arrow uh, data explicitly. So that's about all I have. Uh, thanks a lot. And um, just to plug something, we are hiring at IBM. So if you're uh, interested in this kind of work and uh, uh, want to be involved with any kind of machine learning AI focus, uh, we'd love to uh, hear from you.